Welcome to the uh, workshop, uh, which title is Testing Smart Contracts with Waffle. Uh, my name is Bartek Rutkowski, I work for Trufi, and I'm also one of the contributors to the Waffle open source library. And I'm going to take you through some of the key features of Waffle, and we're going to code some stuff together. So uh, this is what we're going to start with, as the internet situation is not great. Uh, everyone that want to go through the tasks with us, um, I recommend uh, cloning the repository right now and uh, going, so in the readme there is going to be a small section that's going to describe what you need to do. Basically, it's just installing the dependencies and uh, doing some few basic steps. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to wait a second uh, for everyone to do that. I, uh, okay, the URL is going to be visible also uh, later on. So, uh, moving on. Um, there are two basic uh, approaches to testing smart contracts, one of which is testing smart contracts with other smart contracts, which has its very nice properties, but also the other approach is to test smart contracts with JavaScript or TypeScript code, and that's something that we're going to focus on. It has some nice things about it. So first of all, it's very easy and intuitive. So it is very fast, um, which is important if you want to test drive your code or if you want to make sure that uh, the tests uh, are being added to the code as, it, as it's being created all the time. It's also very, very flexible. Uh, I would say even more flexible than testing Solidity with other Solidity code. And it's also kind of DApp native in a sense that um, you interact with your smart contracts the same way your application is going to interact with your smart contracts later on. Um, and then moving on to the Waffle itself, uh, which is a library that utilizes JavaScript and TypeScript, um, it takes a very, very minimalistic approach. So it's not a very large framework that forces you to follow some certain rules, but it rather provides you with some set of uh, utility functions that just help you with the uh, largest pain points. Also, it's blazing fast. As for the JavaScript or TypeScript library, because some of the Solidity testing can be a little faster, but as for a TypeScript framework, it is extremely fast. It also has a very nice and friendly syntax, and it obviously is open source, so anyone uh, having any issues or any problems uh, can reach out, and also if anyone has any ideas what we can improve, then they are welcome to do so. Um, and also, what is uh, very important, that Waffle uh, works well with Hardhat. So if you are already using your Hardhat setup, then you can use some of the features of Waffle as a plugin to your Hardhat setup. So you can use either Waffle standalone as a complete testing solution or as a plugin to Hardhat, which is very nice as well. We're going to focus on using Waffle standalone, but recommend checking the documentation for the Hardhat integration as well. And what Waffle actually does, so it goes you, it uh, uh, takes you through all the steps of smart contract development. So first, it helps you compile your code. Uh, nevertheless, this is Viper of Solidity or Solidity. For most people, it's probably going to be Solidity. If you are Team Vitalik and you prefer Viper, then um, yeah, you can use Viper as well. Then you can deploy your code, uh, whether you want to actually prepare a, a deployment script for the mainnet or uh, some other uh, actually working network or just deploy for the testing purposes. And then provides with all the testing utilities like matchers, fixtures, and smart contract mocks. I'm going to dive deeper into that later on. And what are the Waffles components? It's TypeScript, obviously, uh, with TypeChain. It's Mock and Chai, which are uh, JavaScript libraries for just JavaScript testing, but we utilize them here as well. And Ethers.js, which is uh, a very nice library that wraps all the complexities of interacting with the Ethereum network. So now, what the uh, whole process um, looks like. So first, we need our Solidity code. In this case, this is some Solidity file uh, called exchange.sol, which is some smart contract. And then we need our uh, configuration for Waffle. Uh, this configuration that we we'll see here is not actually a needed configuration because these are all the default values. So um, you don't need to create that configuration. You can just like skip completely this, this step, uh, this, this step, but uh, mentioning this if you want to uh, have something custom. And then uh, we run um, a command, which is just uh, invoking Waffle. And 
Waffle will produce the bytecode, the ABI, which is gonna be helpful uh, when interacting with smart contracts, and the flattened code, which is helpful if you, for example, want to verify your code on Etherscan or a similar, similar site. And then the smart contract deployment itself, which is extremely simple. So basically you only need to import the, uh, the artifact from the, Solid, from the uh, smart contract compilation. And then you need to use the deploy contract function. Um, super easy, first argument is who is deploying. Second argument is what is being deployed. And the third one uh, are the arguments for the constructor of the, of the function. Uh, important thing to notice here is that the token object that we are creating here, which is the instantiation of the, of the, of the token, is tied to the wallet that deployed the, the contract. So whenever we're going to be interacting with the token, we're going to be interacting from, uh, from the wallet. So the wallet is like the default sender of the transaction. And we can change that by just connecting the contract to some other wallet. So by invoking contract.connect, we can have some other person, some other wallet, interacting with the with the contract uh, i oh uh, thank you <laughs> i think i'm gonna find some charger or someone will help me with that uh, thank you <laughs> thank you very much uh yeah that uh, that the computer is on low battery <laughs> um moving on moving on <laughs> Uh, so now, interacting with the network. So uh, there are basically uh, three pieces of the interaction between the user and the network as a whole. So first we have our DApp or a testing suite or a script. And that DApp or whatever else uh, uses uh, a JSON RPC interface to talk to, to interact with an Ethereum node, which is like one of the nodes from the Ethereum network. And we're gonna break down all these like three pieces, uh, how, uh, sort of to wrap all that so it's so it makes sense from the developer perspective so first of all we have the node uh, the node itself usually instead of talking to the node or talking to the network we use some api like infura alchemy oct uh, or uh, a default provider injected into the browser by the metamask but also we can use uh, an emulated network like ganache or uh, or or a bitlery vm or whatever else that is just uh, local instantiation that simulates the behavior of the ethereum network or we can run our own ethereum node at be the hero of the community which i uh, obviously recommend but i understand this is not the case for uh, each solution and then uh, when we have the json rpc level we need to wrap the json rpc complexities with uh, nicer functions so we have two libraries two main two two major libraries that um, that help with that one of them is ethers js second one is web free js actually web free js is older um ethers is like the preferred one by by me myself and a lot of, a lot of my colleagues but uh, just to mention about that, that that there are two of them at least um yeah, and what Ethers.js does is that basically it wraps the whole management of the keys. It helps you construct the transaction. So as we see here, we have the private key. Then from the private key, we can create a wallet object, and then we can add a provider of the network. So sort of connect the, the wallet to a link to the particular node, to the particular API of the, of the Ethereum network. And then instead of just constructing some very bulky JSON and creating a HTTP request and sending that to the node, we can just use like like a simple call like wallet.getBalance and uh, we'll get our balance. And the Inter.js also helps us uh, override some uh, some additional properties of the transactions. So with Ethers.js, we can not only construct like a basic transactions, but also override gas limit, uh, nonce, uh, value, chain ID, whatever else. And then if we construct that transaction, this is like the very bottom line, um, we can just add all these overrides and uh, perform a, like a very custom transaction. And now we dive into the actual features of the, of the Waffle because right now we are sort of uh, discovering the whole environment that's around, around the, uh, the core uh, of the presentation and what Waffle can do on the testing field. So first of all, we can have like basic testing. So we can just invoke some function or we can have some value and we can demand the equality. So first equality, but necessarily, it doesn't necessarily need to be uh, 
um, equality, we can just we can also have we can also expect the value to be within a range of some values or to be close to some value, which is kind of dangerous because obviously in the smart contracts we want everything to be uh, super sharp and super precise. But uh, in some cases, for example, if we are doing some calculations based on time, um, this is not going to be super precise, and you can use something like this. Then we can test all the events, and that sort of corresponds to what what I was talking about. Um, when it comes to the uh, deep nativeness of JavaScript testing, because events are not crucial to the logic of the smart contracts it's themselves, but very often they are super important from the uh, deep standpoint, because we need to be notified about uh, some certain action that happened, and we can test that very easily with Waffle uh, by just expecting some transaction to emit um, an event with some arguments or like emit multiple uh, events uh, or whatnot. We can also test uh, external calls. So uh, in this situation, this is a very simple thing because we just call a function and then expect the function to be called. But we can have a very uh, advanced use cases where we have like a contract calling other contracts. And then we can check whether some particular contract within the whole call stack was called by, by some other contract with some particular arguments, which can be um, quite powerful and allows us to check some of the complex cases of, of many smart contract interactions. Then we have the reverts, which are also uh, super cool uh, to test, super, uh, in my opinion, syntax is super cool and uh, which are obviously super important to test. So first we can just test whether something is reverted, but we can also be very precise about the uh, reverting reason, so the, what, the, what the error is. Um, and also we can, uh, which is one of the newest features, we can check the arguments of the revert. That's one of the newest features of the Solidity and we have uh, the reflection of that in Waffle as well. Then we have wrapper for the token balances as this is something that we test very often. So we can check whether some transactions modifies balance of some tokens um, on some wallets. Uh, so we can do this for just one wallet that we expect some transaction uh, to modify the balance of a token, of a wallet uh, of particular value, or we can perform that for a pair of wallets or a triple of wallets or whatever, uh, or whatever else. We can also have mock contracts. So mock contracts are just like a artificial things that pretend to be smart contracts. So we can set up a mock contract, uh, deploy, a, deploy a mock contract, and then very easily define the behavior of the mock. So basically just say that mock when called, uh, when like a particular method on the mock is called, is going to behave in a certain way. So this is going to return something or is going to revert. We can also specify the arguments and uh, we can just basically uh, uh, model any, any behavior on the, on the mock. Uh, and then mm, the example of the usage of the mocks would be uh, like this. So we have the, some setup that would return contract and a mock ERC20. And then the mock, we sort of like program the mock to return, um, to return some value. And then we can, for example, check whether our contract uh, correctly reacts to the value returned by the mock. So in the first case that our contract uh, after examining the mock will return false or in the second case it will return true because the mock uh, just returns some value that we expect or do not expect. Um, and the last major feature uh, are the fixtures. So uh, this is uh, an extremely powerful thing because uh, normally when we have like a set of tests, basically like a good rule of testing is that all the tests should be, uh, should be, shouldn't depend on each other. So each test should have like a separated setup. We should be able to change the order of the test and everything should still work. So basically what fixtures uh, allow us is, uh, is, is sort of reverting the state of the blockchain to some other state from the past. So basically we can perform some setup transactions, deploy some contracts, and maybe uh, perform some initial transactions, and then save that as a fixture and then revoke the fixture, fi the fixture uh, in each test. So each test starts with the same state and we do not need to uh, redo all the transactions and perform all these transactions again. We just sort of point to that state in the past that we want to sort of start from this, from this particular moment. Um, and that, uh, that actually is one of the things that make Waffle so fast. Um, because, uh, yeah. And now this is going to be like a first full uh, setup of the tests. So uh, actually this is, this is going to be shown also later on, on sort of a cheat sheet when you start coding. But here we can go through the whole 
the whole thing. So first we need to import the stuff from Chai that we need. So we need the expect utility. Um, that's as the most important thing. We need a type from Ethers that defines contract. And then from Ethereum Waffle, we want a deploy contract function. We want a mock provider function, which is the, the emulated network that we're going to be using instead of the actual Ethereum network in the tests. And a solidity, which is just an object that contains all the, all the custom matchers. And then we import the contract itself. So we inject the solidity matchers into the chai itself, and then we can start writing our tests. So uh, here we can see that we create this provider. So we create this emulated virtual network. Um, then we create some wallets, in this case, only one wallet, which is called Alice. We create some contract, and then in before each setup, this time we are not using fixtures, we just deploy the contract, and then we can have like a, in this case, free tests that just assert uh, some certain properties of the, of the contract. Yeah, and now let's time to, it's time to dive in. Uh, so we're gonna have uh, two difficulty tracks. Uh, so first is going to be like a beginner track. So you can use already uh, done smart contract code that we have in the repository that uh, you downloaded, or you can go through the advanced uh, difficulty track. So basically start with an empty smart contract and, and test drive your code. So um, this is uh, an interesting technique that instead of just writing the code and then testing whether the code is correct, you first write the test see that the test is failing. So you are make sure that the contract that you are testing does not have this particular property or does this particular function. And then after you have the failing test, you implement the smart contract logic and then see the test passing. Uh, and then do a necessary refactoring if you need and then repeat. So go on to the next uh, property of the contract that you wanna, that you wanna add. And what we are gonna be working on. So the first task is gonna be to create a very simple splitter smart contract. So a contract that is gonna have a split function, uh, and uh, when uh, and e when some if is gonna be sent to that function, uh, while while well, uh, while well fu this function is being called, it's just gonna split the ether in half and send to different addresses, and it's gonna revert when the value of the if is gonna be zero, and if the uh, value of the if is not uh, dividable by two, then we're just gonna refund the remainder uh, to the original sender. And we want to write the test for that. Um, and task number two, um, which is, th there are gonna be sort of actually uh, uh, quite a few uh, quite a few of them, uh, and you can you can do them in, in any order. So first, uh, at the proper event when the split happens, so just uh, signalize that the split was called with a, uh, with a particular uh, result. We also want to signalize whenever the non-zero remainder was returned because the um, because we have that without we have that function as well, and uh, we also want the owner to be the only person that is allowed to use uh, to use the contract. So the uh, split is going to have a restriction that there is only owner the only one owner who can. Um, who can split the, the ether using the contract. And then we can also use a dynamic array of addresses. So maybe uh, these are not gonna be set uh, for good in the smart contract, but they are gonna be, um, but they are gonna be arguments to the function. And maybe we're gonna have like more addresses than two, maybe three um, or four, or just a dynamic number of them. Um, and of course we want to create tests for that. So uh, that's like a cheat sheet that I'm gonna stop on. So uh, first QR code that you have is a Waffle documentation uh, that should help you with everything. The bottom QR code is the repository that we are gonna be working on. Uh, on the left, you see the list of the tasks uh, that are to be, um, to be done. And on the right, you have a uh, you have a sort of a basic template that shows you uh, what's the general idea of the of the test and how they more or less should look like. Um, yeah. So uh, if you have any questions or if you need to or, or you need help with with, with something, then uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, I'm not uh, the only person here to help. I have Daniel Przemek and Justyna from my team here as well. So if you have any any problems or any questions, uh, we're here uh, to help you. Okay. Uh, should I add something? Um, yeah, so are there any questions? Do I need to rep uh, repeat uh, anything? 
is everything everything clear okay by the way a uh, question um, were you guys able to download the repository because the internet situation is not great so if anyone was uh, was downloading was yeah okay i see some thumbs up so so i guess there was a success okay cool hmm? oh that's a, that's a good point so actually i'm gonna switch from the presentation uh, Oh, nice. So here's the repository. Uh, this is what it looks like. So the first thing is the contracts uh, folder. Here there is the ether splitter, uh, the empty one. So if you go for the solid implementation yourself, then you should start your work here. Uh, if you want to use the already created contract, it's going to be here, the ether splitter ready um, with the split function. It doesn't have all the features from the task too. You can add them uh, later on. And then the test section. So first, uh, some reference in the, in the templates uh, file. And the tests themselves should go into the ether splitter uh, dot tests where everything is uh, set up and here you can also see that we uh, use ether splitter so we import the the empty ether splitter if you want to use the uh, already created one you should just uh, swap the name here from ether splitter to ether splitter already which basically would be just uncommenting this line and then commenting this one and that would uh, make the change for you Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, read me. That's uh, that makes sense. Uh, so actually, I'm gonna. Okay, so first of all, uh, you need to have the node installed, and uh, which I would guess that most of us, you should have that installed already. Uh, then you will need Yarn to install the, um, the repository. If you don't have it, then here's command for you to run. Uh, so install Yarn, and then uh, cloning the repository, uh, entering the repository directory, uh, installing the, uh, installing the uh, repository, and then uh, the two uh, commands that you're going to be using more frequently, yarn build uh, compiles the, the code and the yarn test runs the uh, runs proper tests. Yeah, and also some documentations link um, if you need something. Okay, so I think uh, we're gonna give you some time now. And uh, actually, I think in a few minutes, maybe we're gonna do some live coding if someone's gonna be lost and show you some of the things that are here. Uh, but yeah, but for now, uh, giving you some time. So, okay, so I'm Jen, I, I don't know what there's a kind of fun. <laughs> panel stuff like that. <laughs> you know, anyhow, Apparently. Yeah, but since I'm just waiting for an install in the dependency. So yeah. anyhow, um uh yeah, well I'm really interested in writing some tests and uh, when it comes to web two, there are tons of the um uh, methodologies and the um tips for writing tests, right? So um kind of um kind of uh for example this is writing um kind of um, given when then pattern or kind of um or BDD or the behavior driven test or that kind of things. So that kinds of the things in web two. So when it comes to web three it seems like the security is also important. So I think that the, um, uh, the mental model for testing in the um, Web3 uh, world is really important. So I think, uh, so I really wonder if you guys are thought in the um, testing, especially in the Web3 world. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that uh, one super important technique and sort of like mental model around like not only testing, but uh, developing smart contracts as a whole is, is the test-driven development. Uh, because uh, like when you're like, 
writing a so I'm actually making people not stand up. <laughs> so uh, if you are uh, writing a, a solidity code, it's super important that the contract actually does what it needs to do. So that you don't have some unnecessary lines, that you don't have any things that were put somewhere and you thought that they were going to be useful, but at, then at the end of the day, they ended up being not useful. That all like costs gas. Um, and and this is all you know like a bloat that that needs to be reduced so it's uh, so a very nice technique is to actually test drive your contract so actually write a very explicit expectations about your code and uh, define what you want what behavior you want to achieve from the from the contract and then implement only the code that uh, that sort of like performs the logic that that that's it, that is required to um to fulfill the uh, um, sort of to, to make the test pass um, yeah and then you need to go like through the whole stack so so there is sort of no no differentiation like whether you should use unit tests or integration tests or or some other type of tests you probably need to use like all of them so like you like it's the easiest to just test drive your code using uh, unit tests so that's these are going to be the tests that you're going to be writing, you know, like most of the time. And then uh, if you like test drive all the functions, test drive all the, you know, like small bits of the logic that that you need to put in place, then you probably want to move on to the integration tests and see how larger transactions, how like more complex cases resolve, how performing multiple transactions in a row uh, affects the state and uh, sort of like how, you know, this whole thing uh, behaves. And that that's sort of also not the end of the story because then you need to have like the whole or you should have the whole like testnet deployment. You should play around with the whole thing. You need to uh, you, you also probably should uh, develop like the app or the script that is meant to interact with the smart contracts in parallel to the smart contracts themselves. So all of like these two like remain uh, in sync. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if there are any other tips that I can think of. Maybe someone can add something. Okay, actually, maybe someone has any, any, any more questions. And yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, the microphone is coming. Is there Viper support? Uh, yes. So basically, uh, the only thing that so on the, for for waffle the only thing that's uh, is different for 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 waffle and the, and the viper is that the, you just need a different compiler and then you basically end up with like a the very same uh, compilation products which one is like the bytecode that's just going to go straight to the to the to the chain and the and the abi um, and all the abstraction of you know like wrapping the the calls with like iters js is also you know like the same for viper and the and uh, and and solid so yes definitely there is a there is viper support um you just need to use a different compiler which is also like uh, i think you need to specify in the waffle config config that you are compiling not solid but you're compiling viper but that should be it uh, i'm pretty sure this is somewhere in the documentation i don't use viper personally so i'm not very uh, familiar with that setup but yes uh, viper is definitely supported so uh can you also expand the discussion about testing in solidity and testing outside solidity because that's that's kind of a hot topic with other frameworks like foundry that they use uh solidity and they have you know limitations or things that are uh, uh that need to be work around that what is what is your view on this sure so actually uh, i think that the main advantage of, of of using solidity testing is uh the fact so th there are there are two things okay one is the 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 pace so the, the uh, testing in solidity is definitely faster and uh, and uh, just having everything inside of the of the evm um just makes the t test run faster so uh, which might be important for some people. Uh, and it, it is sometimes actually important if you want to, you know, like run the tests very frequently, which makes sense and you should do that. So this is, this is a nice property. But then like if you have like some continuous integration uh, uh, system on your repository, then it's probably not that important because even like the JavaScript tests uh, are not going to be that long. So that's, that's, that's one thing which is, which is just the performance, which is, which is better on the solidity side. And the other is uh, 
the fact that uh, when using like TypeScript or JavaScript tests, there is this uh, JSON RPC uh, middleman, and there is also like casting of all of the types. So, for example, the uh, when you call a function and then uh, something is being returned, this is like a, some JSON, and uh, and the the big number that's being returned from the from the Solidity or Viper code um, is just a very large number that's not able that javascript is not able to process so you need to cast it you need to have special types and uh, there were times when it was actually a problem that there were that we didn't have like a good implementations of uh, of big numbers and uh, some people were just casting to strings then comparing strings and uh, this wasn't great um but now I think that uh, it's not that much of a problem anymore. Of course, like uh, we, you have all the native types and uh, native type compatibility within the Solidity itself. And uh, we, um, well, using JavaScript to TypeScript, this is sort of external and you need some casting, so on and so forth. But I think this is not that big of a problem. I think at the end of the day, uh, the bigger difference is uh, like sort of uh, collapse to, to what you just prefer uh, from the sort of developer experience standpoint, because I truly believe that both of these approaches can be um, can be just very precise and uh, can really uh, you know um, clean your code from from any bugs or or any or any errors and uh, and are just you know like yeah both very good yeah uh, along the same lines that i'll talk about uh is uh have you uh yourself or seen instances where you're actually testing the user interface so you're basically doing the same ui testing you do with web2 via selenium and then uh, actually kind of dropping down to solidity by executing it for example through a browser uh, yeah, actually, yes. I think I haven't been reading this kind of tests myself, but uh, we definitely still do test uh, our front ends with uh, a typical like web two tools that even just you know like display the whole thing and then like click into like the particular like virtually like click into like the particular sort of uh, components and, and yes and actually perform transactions. Though in this case we would need. Uh, something that would just work very fast. So we, uh, as, a, as a Ethereum network, we wouldn't use like a testnet or a, or a mainnet, of course, of course, but just an emulated network. Yep, yeah, uh, I might uh, try to expand. So we, uh, what we do in TrueFi, we run the whole local uh, blockchain uh, with Ganache or Hardhat. We also run a local DeGraph, and then we run the front end and click through the front end, sending the transaction uh, through MetaMask on this local network. So this is what we do. But it's separate from Waffle, right? Okay. Hey guys, did you manage to download and install and build, etc.? Yes, you did? And how is it going? <laughs> we failed. We failed. Yeah, so my proposition is we are going to plug in a different computer and live code with you. And if you didn't manage to uh, download it, you can come here and like we can do it together, so it's more interesting. And some people that, uh, don't have computers, so you can do it with us here. How does it sound? <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, so let's start. Okay, so I'm swapping the HDMI uh, to some other computer and we're gonna live code. Yeah, and let's thing. start with this task one and Przemek will... Uh, you understand? Yes. All right, guys, so do we have volunteer to start the first task? We'll go the uh, harder track. Yeah, so come here and uh, big uh, round of applause for our volunteer. No, 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 it's this one. Okay. Yeah, so task one is we have um, Empty, empty contract, empty test, and we, we're starting with writing test for one like functionality of the contract. Then we write the, the function in the smart contract, and then the test should pass. So she said. I can help you. So, some technical problems, <laughs> give us one second. Okay, okay. So, 
so we're basically going to mob now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> pair programming for, for now, but yeah, mob. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we want to write ether splitter. <laughs> so just a simple exercise. We take uh, an ether value to, to the a function of a smart contract and divide it into two addresses and make sure to return the remainder if it's an odd value. So just something simple. Hey guys, can you see the text? Great. So we need to add another, we need to add another state of, we need another each statement. And it will test the splitter function, right? Okay, so we are going to start from the first test. Which contract is it? Is there split or ready the ready one? I just want to see how the function looks like. Right now it's Peter Splitter and it's empty. Yeah. I guess we just have to call the uh, to uh, sorry. This is called uh, yeah, so we, have, uh, we, we have an instance of splitter below. So take a look at line 30, 31. Oh, right. Yeah, there's so splitter already right? deployed. There are addresses to be used. Yeah, we have an instance of splitter and we have some uh, accounts like Alice, Bob, Charlie, and David. Uh, and hey, we have to catch the value, right? Um, does it return something? Uh, no, it doesn't. So you want to test the balances of uh, the accounts before and after. Something's wrong there. Mm. Uh, well. Yeah, because right now you use the iter splitter, which is not implemented. Take a look at the contract oh, right that. here. Um, this one. Yeah, right now we use this, which is not implemented yet. Do you want to implement this or do you want to use the implemented one? Mm, let's let's implement it. Okay. Yeah, so that's okay. normal that when we do like TDD, like test-driven development, and we want to call some function and see the results of the function, then we just like, have like an error and we need to first uh, create a just signature of the function. Just split the message with okay. Let's maybe let's start with just the uh, the function. Let's make the test pass, maybe. Let's yeah, and build function. Skip the return, just make it public. Public. What else? Looks nice. We can save it yeah. and then build, right? And then run our tests, see that it works. If we run yarn build, then it will yeah, so we need to run yarn build in terminal. So can you please? And probably. Uh, just yarn, yarn build. Yeah, here we use yarn. Yeah, we so yarn, yarn. Yarn, yarn build. So now we are compiling our Spark contracts with. Uh, with uh, Waffle and could generate types with type chain. And now we can run yarn test to see that our tests are passing. Let's see. Yeah, for now, great. It works. So now let's, maybe here we have like this split and now what we want to see. We want to see that as a result of split, some balances will change. So what should we put here? We have, uh, what addresses yeah, we, we can have? We use Charlie and David as those two yeah, so receivers. Mm. We have Charlie and David. These are like random addresses. And as I understand, we want them to get, mm -hmm. let's say, let's send one ether to, ether to split and splitter and then expect these two addresses to just 
get. Can I? So maybe let's expect what's what is before. So let's say that. Yeah, so, so I test that Charlie right, and maybe David have zero before. So maybe let's start with just one address, just Charlie. Okay, so we can do like proper TDD, which is just start with simple example and then go to more advanced ones. Mm -hmm. So right now, what we want to do is to first check that the initial balance is equal zero, then call this split, splitter and split, and then let's expect for example, this uh, uh, this balance to be equal one. Yeah. Or let's uh, let's be ten into five and five, right? right. Ah, okay, okay. We've okay. just one, right? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna instance a big number for uh, that expresses one token. So one, one token. Mm. <laughs> Not used to it. Okay. <laughs> You will need to import big number. Oh, okay, it's yeah, there it is. Actually, you don't need big number. You can do it differently. You can use uh, properties of iters. Uh, you can call. No, 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 not like this. You can leave it. Can I show you? Okay, yeah, show me this. Yeah, so we can. Um, not like this format. I always uh, format one. Let's import eaters. And now one token should be one eater, right? right. But you, you probably want to move it uh, higher so you can use it in the split function. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Maybe it could like, have. Uh, one second, because we want to pass this as a value. So these are those overrides. So, oh, right. Yeah, and this will yeah. be this value. That function doesn't receive any. Yeah. So this will be this message value. and. Okay, and what do you expect the next one? If this is an iter's instance, maybe uh, we can just divide, divide by... No, no, let's start no? with one, just, just one address. Let's just split it, let's just okay. do it one. <laughs> and it yeah. should pass. Okay, our terminal is broken. Our visual studio code is broken. Yes? Mike? Uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay, it doesn't expect that. What if I do try to do this? No, it's not format eater, it's parse eater. Parse eater. I always confuse this too. All right. Why is it complaining? Or should I Is it not value? Why is it complaining? Oh yeah, yeah, it's because uh, it's not payable in the in the actual ah, code, the solidity table. code, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, make it payable. So Good catch. This is TDD. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, okay, right. you need to build. We're using actual TDD. Uh, you, wait, so you need to build because we changed the smart contract. So we need to build it and then test it. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm used to use it alongside hardhat, so it's just one command. But okay. 
Yeah, yeah good. We're on a red test, so now we can implement it. Nice. Okay. Do you want to break Zero. or do you want to continue? Mm, let's continue. Okay. Yeah. Let's go on. <sighs> So we yeah. should yeah. So we need those two addresses. So you can either take them in the sprint function or take them in the constructor. Yeah. Uh, you, the two addresses mean... that will be splitting. Ah, we are going hard code them. Yeah, yeah let's hard code, hard code them. Let's keep it yeah. simple because we only have right. <laughs> <laughs> so just so it it simple. was Charlie and Bob. Or... Yeah, or it, yeah. Bob and Charlie or, or receiver or... one or receiver two. Yeah, I can. Do. Thank you. We're going to take the two addresses that we split uh, in the constructor. Check. Address yeah. payable. Yeah. Underscore this one. Uh, wait, no. This. I guess right. Yeah. And then this is it. And then this is. Yeah, so we have a constructor with two addresses and we'll be splitting the funds into those two. Maybe we can start implementing the split right away. We have the message value, so we'll do address one that's transfer or send. The message value is the amount that was transferred through the payable function. Gently test. Yeah. So this would be half of it, right? Only two? Okay. Okay, what's going on? Ah, yeah, let's, let's run. Okay, our code is hang, has hang again. Not yet, but it's hanging. So we don't have a lot of time, but if anyone would like to continue, we'll hang around somewhere here, we can help. <laughs> Shit. It's frozen. Shit happens. No, no. Okay, guys, we need to we need to finish. Um, so we didn't manage to do a lot within a short period of time and not very perfect internet situation. But uh, if any one of you wants to continue, then we are here like uh, outside of the outside of the room and uh, we have our booth. So uh, you can drop by, we can talk and we can help you to uh, continue with everything. So yeah, thanks a lot and uh, see you around at DEFCON. <laughs>